Welcome back to the Poultry Doc Podcast. I'm Dr. Blaine Mosesheck, and today we're kicking off part one of my conversation with Alex, a seasoned chicken keeper in Waco, Texas. In this episode, we dive into coccidiosis. We'll talk about how to recognize it, why it happens, and the simple steps you can take to prevent outbreaks in your own coop. Let's head out back. Welcome back to the Poultry Doc Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Blaine Mosesheck, and today we are in Waco, Texas with Alex, filming our 10th episode, so that's exciting. We're moving on. Um, and we're going to talk to Alex today about some husbandry issues that she may have encountered over time. It seems she's got like a, a few things going on, and we'll walk through those and maybe some current issues that are going on in her flock. Alex, tell us about your setup, right? Yes. And what you've been doing, how long you've been doing this. Tell us about the chickens. Um, I had a very small coop in Colorado when I lived in Colorado, three or four chickens. So when we moved to Texas and I had the opportunity to get more chickens, I was like, let's get as many as we can. I've just always been obsessed with chickens. I've always wanted to get them. We've only had them here for about a year and a half. And so most of these birds are somewhat new. I think I only have two from my original vlog. Um, predators, diseases, coccidia, mites, that kind of thing has been my struggle, just trying to keep up with it. Um, I've tried every product, all the different lime products, yeah. the dust products, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, so trying to get a little bit more insight on how to control that, especially with Texas. And then the rain this season has been right, right. abnormal. And so just trying to see what medications, what husbandry issues that I can fix, anything to kind of just like settle it down. It feels like I have lost a chicken every month or two for the last year. <laughs> so trying to figure out how to settle that down a little bit. I know chickens are fragile, but... <laughs> I think, you know, I think most people think they're more fragile than they than really they are. are. And, um, and sometimes we over treat things or mm -hmm. we jump, jump to something when mm -hmm. maybe it's best to kind of take a stand, yeah. wait and see approach. Not always, yeah. but, but I think in uh, many occasions, people are quick to jump on something. You mentioned coccidia or mm -hmm. coccidiosis, and I think that's an important one. We haven't really spoke about it a whole lot in any of the episodes so far. I mean, we briefly mentioned it and I talk about it in the forums a little bit, but it is an important one because you mentioned We've, we've got a lot of rain, obviously, so it's been wet, and water does play a role in coccidiosis. Mm -hmm. But first, before we jump into those details and how it works, you said you had it, so what did you yes. see, and what made you think you had coccidiosis? So, it was diarrhea, some of them were acting just a little lethargic, and how we treated it was, how we were re recommended to treat it was just do one bag of medicated feed, and they should be good. But I felt like that didn't solve the problem, it kind of just, slowly went away over time. I do believe I lost a bird to it. Okay, so. okay. So really didn't confirm it. It no. was just that you thought based on some diarrhea, GI issues, you yes. thought you may have had coccidiosis. Yeah. And that's not unusual. I mean, coccidiosis can cause diarrhea, um, you know, loose droppings. You can sometimes see blood in the fecal contents. Yeah. And I think a lot of people assume that they see blood and that's coxie. Yeah. And while that is sort of true, there's like seven different coccidia that are very popular. Not, it depends on what you read. Some say nine different species, some say seven. And these birds, we're really worried about five. Only one of those actually produces blood. So we can, we can have coccidiosis without blood. That's actually more common than the other way around. Did that bout of coccy come when it was wet or dry? I would say probably wet. Probably wet, yeah. okay. It was hard, honestly hard to keep up with because it would pour one day and then yeah. be dry for a week and then pour the next week. But I would say probably wet. So where did, where did your birds come from? All over. <laughs> some local, some breeders, chicks in the mail, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, we actually hatched some. Okay. They're, they're a mixed bag. It. <laughs> so it sounds like I doubt they were vaccinated for coccidia. Maybe if you bought them from a larger hatchery. Um, Lo yes, I believe some that we got. We got a couple from Ellis County Trade Days. I believe they were vaccinated. Okay. I don't believe the others okay. were. So the way that vaccine works is they're given a small dose at day of age, like it's a spray that's sprayed on the birds, and they, we actually give them coccidia, mm -hmm. and that small controlled dose starts a cycle. And, and so the parasite is actually reproduces inside the intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. It takes about seven days for the first cycle, or each cycle is about seven days. And so they'll excrete the oocyst, kind of the egg mm -hmm. of the coccidia in the feces, and it peaks around that seven days. Then they need about two days in the soil, those eggs do, to, to mature and actually become infective. Then the bird picks it up again and starts to cycle all over. It takes about three of those cycles to develop immunity. Right? Okay. And so if you if you treat with an anticoccidial during that cycle, mm -hmm. you actually kind of you disrupt that 
bird's ability to, to form an immune response to it, right? So you hurt the immunity, and so yeah. you kind of you kind of leave it open to coccidiosis in the future. Yeah. So if you're buying vaccinated chicks, and this is just to the to the audience, not to you yeah. specifically, <laughs> but if you buy vaccinated chicks, you really want to avoid any medicated feed, and so. Medicated feed, while well, that sounds like it's got an antibiotic in it, yeah. medicated feed has an anti-coccidial in it to help prevent coccidiosis. Yeah. That anti-coccidial is amprolium, which is the same thing that's found in Corid. So Alex, you mentioned um, we were talking about rain this summer and it was, it was tr more wet than it typically has been. You have sand in here as, as uh, kind of your bedding. Yes. Now, it's obviously covered, so, and, but it's sloped here, so you probably yeah. get a little bit of water into it, right? So... A lot of people associate wet litter or wet bedding with coccidia, and that's sort of true. Mm -hmm. Coccidia need three things. So we mentioned in that life cycle when they excrete those oocysts or the eggs onto the uh, back end onto mm -hmm. the ground, yeah. they need three things in order to sporulate, become infectious. And one is heat, which is easy to come by here, mm -hmm. oxygen, mm -hmm. easy to come by, and the other is water. So what happens is if it's too wet here, you can have too many of those oocysts become infectious. Mm -hmm. But again, if we're vaccinating, we actually want that to happen. If you've been on medicated feed, for example, and now you don't have immunity to those coccidia, and then you get wet litter and your burden, you like your burden or challenge to coccidia goes up, then that can cause problems too. So yes, moist, wet litter can be a problem depending on your situation. But again, dry litter, like super dry, mm -hmm. dusty is actually, if you're on a vaccine program, you don't want dusty dry you litter because you need that cycling. So that's an important one. Uh, there is an ability to confirm that you have coccidiosis. So we do that through a fecal flotation. And so in that same fecal flotation, we can see worm eggs. We can see really any parasite eggs, which would include coccidia. And so it's a pretty easy one to find. Um, that's one way to confirm that we have it. A little is not, not a bad thing, because remember, we're giving, them, giving it to them as a vaccine, right? So we want to see a little bit. It's really how much they have. And so we kind of score how many we see, like we call OSIS per gram, OPGs. So if we see a lot, thousands, or too numerous to count, mm -hmm. that's a problem. If we see a couple, that's a good thing. If one has it, it's likely that most yeah. of them have it. You know, in a flock situation, if one bird has something, yeah. they're obviously very close yeah. intermingled. So we can assume that they probably all have it, especially if it's a fecal yeah. transmitted bug like coccidia, yeah. um, that they're all going to have exposure to that. And so if we were going to treat for coccidia or anything, really, we always treat the entire flock okay. just the more appropriate way. And honestly, it's easier because there's going to be every variation of like infection. Probably yeah. some may not respond at all or have, have any clinical signs. Others will be very severe. And so there's a whole spectrum of disease there. Yeah. So just because we don't see it doesn't mean they're not sick. So we want to treat the whole flock. Okay. And is Corid the typical treat? Well, so Corid is labeled for dog and cats yeah. think, and calves and other things. It's okay. not labeled for poultry, but it is the same active ingredient. Um, and I, as I mentioned, like the, the feed is the other one that's got amprolium in it as well. One important note, if you do give Corid, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think more is better. Yeah. Right? Just with everything. Yeah. Vitamins or whatever. So it's more is better. Yeah. This is one where you want to give a low dose for three days, maybe. And, and that may not knock it out completely. Yeah. What it does is it suppresses that cycling and allows the bird to recover a little bit. Because remember, if we give that high dose for too long... We're going to knock out all the all the cycling, and the and your immune system or the bird's immune system needs to see coxy in order to continue the response. So if we give cord for too long and too high of a dose, mm -hmm. you totally knock it out of the system, and the bird like loses what we call memory very okay. quickly. And so, like a couple of weeks later, we can start to see another coxy break again, right? So we want to treat at a low dose for a few number of days or for a short period of time. So today I talked about coccidiosis and. Are there any other questions that you have? Not right now. You answered a lot of stuff today. Well, Alex, I appreciate you letting us come to your lovely home and, and hang out with your birds. It's raining right now, so we had to move inside. <laughs> but um, I appreciate everybody for joining. You know, Click that like button, subscribe, tell everybody about it. And thanks for joining us today.